In this video, I'm going to show you how to assign the outputs on an IV3. I'm currently connected to a self-contained model, the IV3500CA. We're going to start by going into the sensor setup. Next, we'll jump to step four for the output assignment. So as you can see, I have three outputs by default, and I have three IO that are configurable between an input or an output function. Right now they are grayed out because these three are assigned to be used as an input. In order to change that, simply click IO mapping. Here is where you can select whether to use them as inputs, to use them as outputs, or perhaps a combination of both of them. For this example, I'll select all three as an output and now you can see I have a maximum of six outputs for this self-contained model. From the dropdown, you have many different options for what your function would be. By default, this is set to total status OK, which is your overall pass for your program. If you would rather have an output for a no good part, simply change this to total status no good. You also have the option for a run signal to let you know that your IV3 is in run mode, busy to let you know when the camera is processing, and you can also assign an output to error to indicate when you might have an error on your IV3. I'm going to leave this as total status okay for now, but note, note that you can adjust the rest of your outputs accordingly to what you want. For example, maybe an individual tool pass fail result. The next setting is the trigger error, which you can simply enable or disable. A trigger error simply means when you are sending the IV3 triggers too quickly, and so it's still processing, but when it gets that next trigger, if in that case, you would receive a trigger error. I'm going to go ahead and disable this. Next, under the output assignment, you have the extra one tab. Here's where I can set my total status conditions. Your total status condition is what the IV3 will use to determine your overall pass fail. So by default, it will be all tools okay, meaning that if I have multiple tools in my program, all tools would need to be okay in order for my total status in this upper left corner to be okay. I could change this to any tool okay, meaning if any one of my tools passed, I would get a good signal. Or you can use logic. If you're going to use logic, you need to come down here into the logic settings and specify what tools you would like to consider and whether you're doing and logic or or logic. Cancel out of here. Finally, under the extra two tab, here's where you have your setting for the program auto switching. If you have questions about how to use this, please see the video which discusses the auto program switching function. This pretty much sums up how to assign the outputs on the IV3, so I will hit complete here. The last thing I want to quickly show you is in the IO settings, if you go to your output tab, here's where you can choose from normally open or normally closed for each output that you have. And you can also enable a one-shot output versus latching. By default, the IV3 will be latching, meaning it will hold on that judgment until the next judgment is complete. However, if you want to hold it on for a specified amount of time, you can enable the one-shot here. Once you enable a one shot, simply set your one shot on time anywhere from 10 to 1000 milliseconds. This will be how long that signal is held before it turns off. And then you can also set your on delay time, which is just the delay for when that signal turns on. Lastly, if we jump into IO monitor, this can be really useful for troubleshooting purposes by manually turning on the output at different times to verify whether your third-party device, whether it's a PLC, a stack light, et cetera, is receiving that signal. You can just make sure it's on or off. 
Before I mentioned, I was using a self-contained IV3. However, if you are using the separate head and amplifier model, the IV3G, here is the wiring diagram for the I.O. As you can see, I have output 1 through output 8. The functions and how you enable them are the exact same process as what I just showed with the self-contained model. However, note that you have additional inputs and outputs that you can use with the compact model. I hope this video helped explain how to assign the inputs on the IV3, but if you have any additional questions, please give our tech team a call at 888-KIANTS-OPTION-2 for tech support. Thanks and have a great day.